part one, we did the oil cooler valve, which will make the oil cooler open up sooner, keeping our oil temps down. Part two, we did the lower temperature thermostat, which is gonna allow the thermostat to open up sooner and keep our cooling temperatures down. Combination of the two should allow the engine to run a much cooler, but on top of that, we're gonna do three more things, really simple, low hanging fruit. Number one, we're gonna remove our engine cover right here. This is trapping in a bunch of heat, especially with all of the hoses and wires and plastic and rubber that's right underneath that, on top of the turbos, holding a lot of heat there. And while we're at it, we're gonna remove this rear weather stripping back here to allow all that heat to escape out under the hood. So with those two things, it's free, it's simple, and it's gonna get heat out from under our hood and keep it away from important things that we don't want deteriorating. We're also gonna be adding some water wetter. So this is actually the Hypercool Supercooler. It's pretty much the same thing as water wetter or purple ice or whatever coolant additive you wanna use. They all do basically the same thing and what they're doing is they are reducing the surface tension of the liquid to allow it to disperse more heat. So it's just making your coolant system more efficient. I'm gonna be adding it both to the coolant system and to our air to water intercooler system to allow that to be a little bit more efficient as well. And lastly, we're going to be adding the coolant cap from a 35D, which is the diesel version of the X5. It has a 1.4 bar pressure cap versus the factory two bar pressure cap. So what that's gonna do is just keep the maximum pressure of the coolant system a little lower. We will still have more than enough headroom to get to way too high of a temperature, but we would never run at that temperature anyway. I'm not sure what the point of having such a high pressure cap is. But with our lower temperature thermostat, our better coolant, and the fact that the car already has a huge radiator and a very competent coolant system, everything should run really well together. So we're gonna get started by putting this cap on. It's actually extremely simple. Just unscrew the old cap, which is over here on the driver's side, right by this power terminal for the battery. You've got your positive terminal right there. You can see they're the same cap. The only difference is on this one, it says 200 on it, both on the outside and on the inside whereas this one says 140, so it's your 1.4 bar cap. This is a BMW cap, it costs less than $20. And it's not a bad idea to replace these anyway just because they're under so much heat and stress and pressure and they are made out of plastic. And the nice thing about this is you can't over or under tighten it because it has a little arrow on it right here. So you're going to twist that down. You'll feel a nice little click at the end and this arrow should line up with another arrow on the tank. So that was installed in real time, took no time at all. Now, depending on which one of these coolants you get, you can add them at different ratios. So I added it in when I was doing the thermostat. So it's already in the system, but depending on which brand you choose, it'll tell you the amount to add to the specific coolant volume of a vehicle. Just err on the side of caution, use this, but not too much of it. You don't wanna overfill your system with this. You also don't wanna overfill your system in general. Lastly, we're gonna be removing this engine cover. It just pops off on two different posts on the back. So you just pull straight up from the back. And I'll go to the other side. slide it out so you can see it's got some insulation under here it's actually really thick I mean maybe two inches thick of insulation but it pops right out here you can see the post it's held on by two in the back on top of the turbos as well as one on either side towards the front so you pop those four off and you can remove it, it serves no purpose other than aesthetics all it's doing is trapping heat around the turbos lastly what I'm going to try on a recommendation of one of the forum members is removing this rear weather stripping here it seems a little bit extreme to me, but at the same time, I don't really see any way that it's gonna come back and get under here. So, you just gently pull up one side, it slides all the way off. If I have any issues with it, of course, I will keep this and I can just throw it right back on. But that should allow a lot of underhood heat to work its way out of a car. So my wife has been driving around without her engine cover Basically, since the day we brought it home, I almost took it off instantly because common sense just tells you, take that off, you can get some heat out of the way. It's just there for the engine to look good when people are buying the car. But I remembered I have a way to test that. So I have a infrared thermometer here. So it's got the little laser. And what we're gonna do 
is she drives home the same way from work every day. It's about a half hour drive from her work to our house. And the temperature this week looks like it's gonna be pretty consistent. So what I'm gonna have her do is I'm gonna have her drive home. I've asked her as nicely as I can to please drive home pretty consistently. This isn't gonna be super, super scientific, but at the same time, if I can get her to try to drive about the same speed, you know, stop the same number of times as best she can, then we can test the temperatures in a few different places under her engine bay with the cover in place and the little weather stripping. And what we'll do is we'll pop the cover off, you know, check some different places around the engine bay. And then we will do the same thing with the cover off and the stripping removed. And we'll see how much of a temperature change do we have under the engine bay? Are things running colder? Are things running hotter? Is it, you know, keeping it cool over by the turbos, but that heat escaping is maybe causing a temperature increase somewhere else. So we'll see, is that something you should actually do? And we'll try to apply a little bit of science to it instead of just bench racing. All right, so my wife literally just cut the car off maybe a minute ago. She just got home. I just opened the hood up. I've got a list of all the spots we're going to be checking. We're going to check the top of the turbos, the coolant tank over here. We've got the air box, the hood, the ABS module, the firewall behind the heat shield, and then the cowl just to see if we can kind of get an idea of what air is going out there. We're going to check those locations both today and tomorrow after she comes home from work. So I've got my little infrared gun here. So we're going to go top of the turbos. I'm going to... So what we'll do is tomorrow we'll do the same exact thing comparing each of these spots and we will see if these temperatures go up or down with the addition of the engine cover and that seal that goes across the back of the engine bay. All right, so it is the next day. My wife just got home from work. It is a little bit cloudier today, so we may repeat this as tomorrow. We'll just see how the numbers go. But I'm trying to see if we can get a noticeable difference. If it's a big difference, then obviously this is gonna go. So what we're gonna do is take this off real quick. So I can We have our new temperatures. As you can see, your coolant reservoir was a little bit warmer. Airbox, about the same, a little bit cooler. Your hood was a good bit cooler. Your ABS module was a little bit cooler. Firewall was a little bit warmer. And your cowl was a lot cooler. So that's showing me, one, the air is escaping out right here, and that's taking heat with it. That's what that's saying to me. Your firewall is a little bit hotter because of course it's keeping that air trapped underneath there. ABS, a little bit cooler because it is keeping the heat back here in the engine bay and not allowing you to get forward. So basically the things that are in front of the turbos all up here is staying a little bit cooler. The things that are tucked back here are staying much, much hotter. I mean a 50 degree temperature difference between the valley and between the turbos with or without it is a huge difference. So that is gonna help all of these rubber hoses here. So all of these hoses right here, all this coolant lines and oil lines, all of these are being heated up because they're stuck under the piece of plastic. Now we can't remove this front piece of plastic because it is part of the air box. The whole piece is one big air box. So we can't remove that. Do I think it looks a little silly with the back half exposed like that? Yes, I do. But I don't really care because I'm keeping the engine cooler. I'm gonna allow these pieces to last longer. So these rubber hoses, these pieces of plastic, all of that, that is what I'm trying to save. So all of this is gonna come off to stay. That 50 degree temperature difference is more than enough justification for me. And of course, if for whatever reason I wanna throw it back on, I can do that at any time. I'm really happy with these numbers. So I'll put this up here just one more time. But I would say the biggest two numbers I'm looking at is the cowl of showing the 17 degree difference as it's showing me that heat is getting out of the engine bay and this 50 degree difference between the turbo without the engine cover and with it. So those are the numbers I'm going to focus on and really take away from this. But to kind of finish up, I'd really like to thank N63 Intake for sending me both their oil cooler valve and their thermostat. Both of those have worked together extremely well. I've driven the car for probably two or three weeks now with both the parts on. Everything's running perfectly. I have no check engine lights. Everything is running much cooler, a good 20 to 25 degrees cooler. 
So I cannot recommend those parts enough. They have done extremely well. It's such a small amount of money and time invested for the amount of money and time you're going to save in the long run by keeping all of this alive. So of course, links will be down in the description for that. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to hit me up below. You can also go to N63 Intake.